comments because I'm actually just going to geek out a little bit on some very interesting data that's going to help a lot of people understand both ladders and water-fed poles. So it's basically an understanding of the physics of torque, and torque is also called moment. So if you want to geek out with me and you want to Google, you can Google torque, moment, inclined object, um, gravity, um, words like that. So I thought that rather than talking about water-fed poles, because you know you can't clean a window with a water-fed pole. Some people just don't quite get that yet. It got called a water-fed pole a long time ago, but it's the brush that cleans the glass, and that's why you'll see at Reach It we put so much effort into constructor brush to make the best brush in the world because you're going to get the most efficiency from the brush. So what does the pole do? Let's imagine this is our pole, right? What does the pole do? The pole replaces the ladder. The pole juxtaposes the ladder. The pole enables you to get the tool on the glass by extending a pole rather than climbing a ladder to put the tool on the glass. So the pole replaces the, the ladder. So I thought, well, what better way to explain water-fed poles than to start with explaining ladders? So, um, and also I think you're gonna get a huge benefit, those of you who don't understand the science of, um, of ladder safety. Because this is what I wanna point out. If we have what's close to a frictionless surface down here and a close to a frictionless surface up here, and we put this pole or ladder, let's say it's a ladder, and we put it against that surface, watch what happens. It falls. Okay, why did it fall? Well, it's because gravity was pulling it this way and there was not enough force this way or that way to hold the pole. Now, if I put it at this angle, let's say, we could say that it, even though those two frictionless surfaces are, um, are still the same surfaces, we can, we can, and that would be an interesting one that it wants to rotate there, but that's another pole issue, the desire of a pole to rotate. Um, but so now you can see that it's got what's called static equilibrium. Right, so the inclined object is now leaning against the wall and being held by the friction, so there is friction on the ground. And what's happening is that gravity is pulling down on the pole um, or the ladder at this angle, so there's, there's very less um, um, forces required from this way. So what's actually happening is the wall is pushing back this way and the the, the, the friction coefficient on the ground is pushing this way and so you have an equilibrium and so this pole is able to stay like this. So the, there's, there's a certain point where you can say this is going to be safe and then it's not. Okay, so what if we introduce a rubber mat? So you introduce a rubber mat to increase the friction coefficient on the ground. Ta-da! And the ladder is safe, right? You climb the ladder, you add more mass, so you start putting more pressure on the pole at different, you know, at whatever height you're at. Okay, now you can see this pole because there's a frictionless surface here, and this pole wants to, you know, wants to fall over. So again, if we also stabilize the top of the pole with rubber as well, then you can see that actually the pole is more stable. So that's why we're looking to stabilize a ladder um, both at the top and at the bottom. And I'm no expert on ladder safety. I've got no idea whatsoever about how to make a ladder safer. I just can tell you this is the science behind it, okay? As to, in, in, in order to keep your ladder from doing that, okay? So now, how you, all of the, how you stay safe on that ladder, three points of contact, all that sort of thing, talk to Mike Draper, because Mike Draper is committed the rest of his life, it appears, to um, window cleaning safety. So he's covering all the issues about, um, about window cleaning safety, water fed pole safety, um, rope, uh, rope safety and all that, excuse me. Okay, I can't read any of your comments because I've got the camera pointing at me. So I will go back and answer all your comments. Okay, so now let's take it, um, and I'll, if you've got any questions that you want me to um, try and propose a, a sample answer for, then please just type those questions in, and I'll attempt to make a little sub-video comment to answer it as I understand it, right? Disclaimer, I'm no scientist. 
Okay, but I'm passionate about, about window cleaning and window cleaning safety more than anything else. So before Mike, I think I was the, the, the world leader in, in addressing um, safety. So, and I think I'm still a world, world leader in addressing water-fed pole safety. So let's talk about water-fed poles. <clears throat> okay, so if we have a water, this is now a water-fed pole, okay? And we have it leaning against the building and you'll see us putting me putting a lot of videos up about how rigid the warrior is and how rigid the tactical is. I'm going to demonstrate that over and over again and make sure everybody understands that uh, the Reach It Poles, we're the only company in the world that has only ever sold 100% uh, carbon fiber poles to professional window cleaners. We've never, pardon me, promoted hybrid fiberglass or aluminum poles for professional use because they are increasing and really exponentially increasingly injurious for the use at um, at heights okay so so why is rigidity important and what is a water-fed pole and what are the forces that are working on a water-fed pole so you can see there's a video of me cleaning with one hand and there's one um one member of the of the forum or member of the group or whatever who uh, who says you can't clean with one hand because you need to put elbow grease in and you need to be putting all this effort in. And what I want to do is explain to you how the forces of um, uh, on, an, on an inclined object you know, work because it's exactly the same as the latter example. That if I'm down here and I'm holding a water-fed pole, and in this case it's static, right? We're not cleaning any windows at this point, we're just static and we're assessing what are the forces. So in order for this uh, pole, its desire, by the way, take away friction, its desire is to do that, right? So in order to prevent it from doing that and being, and being static, there's a force going this way and a force going this way. Now, when there's these two opposing forces, right, then, and, and the force is, is created by gravity, the gravity is determined by the mass of the product and the, as it happens, the, the angle that that pole is at, right? Because what we're looking to do, if I grab a water-fed brush, this is a constructor brush. This is what we call the all-rounder, right? So we have, it's actually a double trim brush. So you can see this bristle blade here is the outer bristle blade. Um, these bristles are the end cap bristles, which go into the corners. And this, uh, these are the massive bristles, which are on the inside. So what we want to do when we get this brush on the glass, oops, up the wrong way, we want that to, oops, that's a moving object. So we want that brush to, to splay, right? To splay like that, right? And that's gonna spread the bristles at the right angle. It'll activate the internal bristles. And what that'll do is then give us more agitation per stroke. So in order to get that, that brush to splay, and that's why we, we change the angle of these so that these take less force to splay, right? We need force in this direction or force in this direction in order to get the bristles to splay. So step one, we need bristles to splay on an ordinary brush, right? And I think pretty much almost all, except our solar brush, but almost all the brushes in the industry are a dual trim of some sort. So they're also desiring a splay um, as part of the activation and, and effectiveness of the brush. So the important part is that now we can understand that, that, that we're standing and creating friction here, so this is the person, and the building is pushing back on the brush here even when it's static, right? And so the, if, depending on how high the brush is, how heavy, the, sorry, how high the pole is, well, how high the brush is actually, um, how heavy the pole is, in other words, how far extended it is, whether it's rigid or whether it's floppy, right? Because you're gonna lose a lot of its, um, uh, you know, as, as, as the flex is built into the pole, you lose a lot of the effort and the forces in the flex. And that will determine the amount of force that's present um, at the building where the brush is that would naturally splay the brush. Now, the truth is, when we're static, we can't clean a window, so we don't actually need the brush to be splayed at, at a static point, right? So what we're gonna do is we're the window cleaner, and we're gonna, uh, I'll try and keep that in a line, we're gonna do this, yeah? We're gonna walk up and down, or, or use our arms, yeah, like this, and we're gonna apply force. Actually, we're kind of applying force like this, or if we've got a really long pole, we're applying force like this. So we're just walking the pole. And, 
As we walk in this direction with a 40, 50, 60 foot pole, hope you can see that. Um, as we walk in that direction, let me get that out of the way. As we're walking like this, you can see that the brush is scrubbing the glass, right? But on the upstroke, like when we walk in this direction, we're, we're, we're applying force in this direction and the, based on the angle of the pole at the time, there's a cosine or a sine formula as to what percentage of that force that we're applying in this direction is getting applied in force to compress the brush against the glass. It's pretty geeky, right? I'm really excited about this because it really will help you understand all sorts of things about window weapon as well next. Okay, so if we're going like this, where we're like two and three story, maybe even four story, like big, big arms, big shoulders, and you're just like scrubbing away like this, then the force that we're applying is more in line with the poles, right? Because that's our brain will tell us to do that. So we'll go like this. But again, the, the, because you're pushing it up, so part of that force is being applied in the, in the vertical, yeah? Because force is broken down into vectors and you're looking at the X and Y percentage of that uh, based on the angle. So it's part of the force when, you, when your worker is pushing the pole up and down like this, part of that force is being applied to the vertical, which is why the brush goes up, and part of the force is being applied against the glass, right, this way, opposing what's the natural force coming from the building this way, adding those two together, compressing the brush, increasing agitation. Now the secret to efficiency, efficiency is, um, is, a, is, is basically um, uh, um, um, faster work, like so work, let's talk about work. Work equals force through distance. Work is not just a term of what you don't like to do on Mondays. Work is a scientific term. You can look it up in, uh, in Wikipedia. It's force through distance. And efficiency is working um, faster or working with less effort, right? So work is measured in calories um, and, ca and so is food, right? And so is heat. So if you basically, you'll see in, in, my, in my training, I try, I try and go through the, our life as we work, we eat, we work, we eat, we work, we eat, we work, we eat. And it's, it's kind of like horrible, because, but it's true. We, we, we eat calories and then we work calories, force through distance. How much effort is it taking me to push that brush against the glass? How many strokes am I doing in my agitation phase and my rinse phase? Am I flipping it around and scrubbing it with something else and then flipping it back over and, and, and rubbing it and then pulling it off the glass and rinsing it? I mean, that's, if you look at the reach it design, the reach it design is all about addressing these issues and reducing the number of steps to the minimum number possible. And I know I've got a lot of people that don't think that it's possible, but we also have a lot, a lot, a lot, like, a, like th thousands of customers that are making double, triple, quadruple what they used to make because they actually follow the science um, that the reach it system is based on, right? So what we want to do is reduce the force and reduce and or reduce the distance in order to make work more efficient, right? And then you can eat less. So then your net return for your dollar you earned and the dollar you spent is going to be better just even on how much food you need, right? How many monster sh drinks you drink, you know, for the, for the sugars, okay? Okay, so how does that then apply? Now we have force through distance. We want to apply a force through a distance and we want to reduce the number of strokes. So now we start thinking like a traditional window cleaner. He goes, I've got a mop. If my mop doesn't work, I'll try a porcupine. He, you, like a guy can read the glass before he gets to it, so it's not like he's trying it and then swapping out. If he knows the porcupine's not gonna work, he's gonna switch to a white non-scratch pad. If the white non-scratch pad doesn't work, he's gonna go to steel wool or bronze wool. If steel wool or bronze wool doesn't work, he's gonna go to a blade and he's gonna blade the glass, right? So he's gonna increase the agitation. Why does he do that? The abrasiveness, let's say it's the abrasiveness of the agitation. Why does he do that? Because inherently he knows that if he had to use a mop or a porcupine he would be there for five or ten minutes scrubbing and scrubbing and waiting for the water to work and scrubbing and scrubbing and waiting for the water to work and, and but if he just brings out a white non-scratch pad dips it in his solution and goes like this it's all gone so he's inherently naturally driving himself towards efficiency now all of this got lost in water fed for the last 50 years since Waterfed came out because we called it a Waterfed pole, it got stuck. When I first got in Waterfed in 2006, I bought my Waterfed pole, I put a, a VCAM truck brush on it, and for the next four years, we only ever used that pole and that brush, well, that pole with that brush. It was a Waterfed pole, it had internal tube, maybe three years, two years, but when I started thinking. 
internal tube, all one system, all one pole, great. Um, and, then, and then eventually what happened is that we were buying, um, and, and then I started importing poles and then we started selling, you know, one for one story, two story, three story, four story, five story. So you'd have five different poles to do five story work, all laid out against the building at the beginning of the job, and then different tubes for each one. And then eventually I rationalized the tube, so I took the tube external and thought, okay, I can just change the pole without changing the tube. And then somebody came to me and he said, dude, like I've got a four story pole, can I buy you know another 10 feet for my to go to five stories? And I go, no, you can buy a five story pole for 15.95. And he goes, dude, I've got 40 feet, why do I want why do I need to buy 50 to get 10? And I said, that's a good idea, right? And that's what started ReachIt was that conversation because ReachIt was always designed to pull apart one story at a time and extend one story at a time um, based on, on that principle. So why does that apply to you? Well, because what you're looking for is the most efficient, cost-effective, efficient um, system that requires the least amount of work from you so you get the greater efficiency and then I was talking to somebody this morning on the phone is that the, the, the weird thing is that the byproduct of efficiency is safety. If you do less strokes, if you require less force, right, then, then your body is being worked less. So your, the, the, the whole function of working as a water-fed pole window cleaner is less injurious by the nature that you've reduced the number of cycles, by the nature that you've reduced the number of the amount of load on the body in each cycle, okay? So let's talk about why this force, right? This, this, the, 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 the moment, right? The torque, right? This is actually, this, this function here where we take away the friction, right? And we move it to a point where it's no longer in equilibrium. That's torque, right? And there's a center point here because there's no person on the ladder here or there's no extra weight here. Um, in a telescopic pole, there's more weight at the bottom than there is at the top, so the center point comes down. But basically, there's a center point here that is going through an arc and it's caused by gravity unless you add mass you know, to, to, the, to the pole. So we want to get the window weapon on that glass to use your traditional tools the same way as you've learned to with your natural efficiency over, over 80 years since Ettore Stacone bought out the squeegee and, 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 and you know, changed the way that windows were cleaned way back then. So we want to get a window weapon now this is window weapon it looks the same as a constructor all-rounder except it's got a block on the inside it's got double hook velcro and we can attach whatever pad we want in this case today i'm talking of i've got bronze wool on there but you can put microfiber and dose it up with um, detergent if you're dealing with petrochemicals you can put white non-scratch pad a lot of people do that and make this their go-to brush they just leave it on all the time you can go all the way out to uh, what we call blue metal, which is stainless steel shavings woven into a polyester pad to give an amazing abrasiveness that'll take off paint overspray, uh, artillery fungus, um, bee poo. All of these are coming off. Like that's all proven now from legitimate and, uh, um, and uh, good customers giving us videos. Okay, so now we wanna say, all right, if we have a 12 inch window weapon or we have a 16 inch window weapon, then you have a look at the difference in the area of the bronze, um, which is gonna be on the glass. This one has 50% more area. So therefore the forces, right? Well, we've got this up on its pole. The forces, are, if the forces are equal, then this will have 50% less effect. Now that's fine if you're just doing commercial work, you just wanna be able to you know, have an increased level of agitation. But if you're actually doing something where you really need to clean something up, then the smaller pad gives you more pounds per square inch like against the glass from the operator and using the what would have been the static equilibrium, you know that the building is putting a force back against, um, against the brush as well. So you're adding those two together. Um, and you're getting that much force. Now, when you look at some of the people, you know, trying to copy what reach it is, and uh, they're introducing like pad systems, which are, you know, you've got to use a pad and then you've got to get out a brush and then you've got to, you know, use the pad, use the brush, rinse with the brush, but it's trying to sort of, you know, piggyback on top of the window weapon brilliance, right? And, but the reality is that those scrubby pads, which are basically, you know, floor mops with nine by six pads on them, different pads, whatever, they're three times the surface area. So they're 50% they're more surface area than the 16 inch window weapon. 
right? Three times more the surface area of a 12 inch window weapon. So the actual pounds per square inch when you go to use them, it doesn't work. You're not gonna get the same effect. So whilst you know somebody may persuade you or seek to persuade you that it's the same as a window weapon just by this and it's like a quarter of the price, it's not the same. What you're looking for is the, the amount of square inches. Now, this uh, inside window weapon is, a, is a, a radial, right? So there's a curve in there. So this is actually not, a, not on a flat surface. So it's, a, it's basically two inches wide, but an inch and a half by eight inches um, is 12 square inches intended, you know, for the pounds per square inch on the glass. And this one is uh, 18 square inches, you know, of pounds per square. So you can calculate the forces, right? So there you are, that's my, um, I look forward to your questions, I look forward to your comments. It's a really, really interesting area for you to add this to your training if you wanted to, for your workers to understand A, their ladder safety, how important it is to, to secure and get the friction coefficient at the ground to get that stable so, so you don't get a roll, you know, because you can see with a pole it'll want to move. Um, to increase the friction coefficient, by, by hooking or, or stabilizing or using, you know, the, all the different things that the ladder industry has brought out, but this teaches you why, right? If you don't, you, you're the like that, okay? And then secondly, with a water-fed pole, oh, I did want to show you this, that if you had a floppy water-fed pole, yeah, then imagine basically whether the guy's walking like this, yeah, or whether he's, he's going like this and pushing it up and down, this is what's happening. He's flexing, if the pole is flexing, now there's a point that every pole has to flex and the further, by the way, the further away you get from the building at this angle, right, the further away you get, let me put this away, the more that pole's gonna flex, why? Because gravity is pulling down on the pole. So there's an, there's an ideal angle for water fed, which gives you the force against the glass, splays the bristles or gets the window weapon against the glass so that it's actually working and um, and you're not getting flex. So, the, so obviously the pole is like so easy to be perfectly straight and rigid if you're close to the building. And you know, very difficult if you're talking like five and six stories, very difficult to have it perfectly straight if, it's, if, you're, if you're out of, you know, this with, a, with an angle here of 30 degrees, right? So, but if you've got a floppy pole, and if you're trying to do solar panels on top of a roof, it's even different. If this is a roof and you're trying to get to the solar panels and you've got a floppy pole and it's gonna hit the roof and it's gonna be down here, and you're gonna put your effort, your force in this direction, and instead of you being transferring it in a straight line, what'll happen is, you know, your, your, your pole will, will flex. Now, flex, if you think about a, a wire, like in the old days we used to have fuse wire and, and eight gauge wire on the farm and stuff like that when we we're doing fencing. And if we wanted to get a little piece of wire like this long, we would just go bend, 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 bend. And what would happen is the wire would get incredibly hot and then it would break. And like you'd actually break the, the structure of the molecules or align them in such a way that you can break them. So if you understand that flex is heat. Now with a water-fed pole, when the water-fed pole is flexing, that's your calories, that's your work being lost in flex. And it's, and it's being converted to calories by the, in form of heat. But of course, because the surface area of your pole is so great, then um, you're not gonna actually be able to feel the pole heating up. But that's actually where your calories went. If they didn't, like when you have a straight line, I, I walk, you know, three feet this way, the brush goes, let's say three feet that way. But if you have a flexing pole, you know, I walk three feet this way, maybe the brush goes two feet that way, and the rest is lost in the flex, right? So don't think that, you know, there's a way to use flex, right? Flex is good too. If you, if you wanna, you know, bounce a brush from one window over a frame and things like that, then you can put a great big piece of acceleration there, put a pulse into the pole. By the time that pulse gets to the brush at five and six stories, it becomes weightless and you just lift it up and run it across. You'll see a video from us on bouncing a brush. So, you know, flex is not all bad, but you don't want flex in your day-to-day -day water fed window cleaning pole. You get less efficiency, less precision, less hourly rate, less profit, less life, you know, because it's all about lifestyle and um, less um, salary to your worker or, 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 or percentages to your worker. The, the whole thing doesn't work, right? The window cleaning industry needs to be 150 to $250 an hour to be able to help you scale that into a business like the pressure washing guys do. 
right? So pressure washing, roof washing, soft washing, all making, and carpet cleaning, all making two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight hundred dollars an hour. Window cleaners, you know, down through the ages, if I go back from 2006 talking to people, 75 bucks an hour to 100 bucks an hour, right? Doesn't make, none of it makes sense to me. That's why I focus 100% on your efficiency, helping you understand why you need a rigid water fed pole because you wanna, if you're gonna move in this direction, you want the brush to go there with the same, with the maximum amount of transfer of effort. Now, one last point on safety. You see me all the time wearing prisms and people wanna make fun of me because I wear prisms, right? The glasses where you look straight ahead and you see straight up. I tell you that anybody who's water fed window, not anybody because there's always somebody who hasn't, but most of the guys who are water fed for 10 years, right? They have got disc no less than discomfort, if not pain in here because the trapezoid muscle is contracting, 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 holding a contraction. You know, if you're at the gym, you know, you, you lift the weight, like let's say you do this and you lift the weight and then the, the trainer goes, hold it, hold it, hold it, hold it, hold it, right? And it burns and burns and burns, okay? So it's the same thing. Like we're looking up and we're holding, 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 and this muscle is cramped like this. And then we wonder why we get, some guys get tension headaches that's proven from this action here, the craning of the neck, <coughs> pardon me. So what happens is in order to protect your neck so I don't have to crane my neck so far, if you're working at three and four stories, you see it all the time when guys are putting videos up on Instagram and, and Facebook, I see it all the time, and you'll be able to observe it now. You see the guy working from back here instead of working from here. Okay, why is he doing that? There's, there's no scientific reason, there's no natural um, um, co uh, uh, cognition that would drive that from an efficiency point of view. He knows the pole is less efficient here than it is here. Do you know why he's doing it? To save his neck, right? When he's here, he's looking up at this angle. When he's back here, he's looking up at that angle. So that's why you see guys stand so far away from the building and then obviously gravity grabs that pole, puts flex in that pole so, so it's more difficult. Now, if you can get used to prisms, it only takes two or three days because you remember your brain's for 30 or 40 years, your brain is used to looking straight ahead and seeing what's straight ahead, right? So, so it just takes two or three days for your brain to get, to get acclimated to the idea that I'm going to look straight ahead and I'm going to see straight up. So now Mr. Operator here is looking and he just has to tilt his head like that and he's seeing here. And so this whole neck area is protected and it's bizarre. Like we include prisms with every water fed pole, but if you don't have a reach it, but you, if you, let's say you have an under in light high mod, like great pole, right? If they're high modulus um, and they're a, a, a round, out of round is not the same when you're looking at the modulus of a pole because the, 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 in order to hold an out of round pole together, right? You, you have to put more layers this way and, and, the, and the, therefore the, the, the strength is going this way to hold it together. And, and compared to making a water fed pole, we try and put as many of the fibers this way as we can so that we get the rigidity and the, and the strength from the modulus of the carbon fiber in, in, the, in the alignment, right? So that's your unidirectional principles. Okay, so if you, you can buy prisms from us or you can go to a rock climbing shop if you want to and, and try and find some, but our ones are really special because um, we've, we've got maximum peripheral. The rock climbers like to close the peripherals, right? They don't want to see anything around. They really just want to look up and be focused on what, what they can see that's up. And, uh, and our be um, you know, belly glasses or the prisms, the prisms, for, the reach at prisms have got maximum peripheral vision. So if you look at the video, if you look at my wall or you go to the reach at poles page or you go to the advanced window cleaning Facebook group um, and, and join us there, then you, you will see me wearing them and you'll see me talking to the camera and you can see my eyes even though I'm still wearing the prism. So that's really important. So you can see the ground, you can see people approaching, you can actually look up above the glasses and actually see what you're looking at if you wanted to um, like that. Okay. So that's my geek out, my nerdy moment. I hope the Facebook stayed live because I can't see if it's live. I hope the battery's still working. Um, otherwise, I'm just talking to, uh, to, a, to a wall. <laughs> okay, so I'm gonna leave my desk here, come around, turn this off, um, save it to HD, we'll push it up into YouTube. Um, you guys feel free to use it, share it, um, if you think that it adds value. I think there's a whole lot here which is gonna open the minds of a lot of people who have really never really thought about physics Static, static equilibrium moment talk 
inclined object. Those are your scientific terms if you want to geek out and go, go Google. And look at Khan Academy, K-H-A-N. Khan Academy is a dude who started his own academy, free education, science guy, explains everything. You know, you've got to work your way through it, but if you start at the beginning and go to the end, there's some really good videos there to get your head around it, if you're interested. Otherwise, just uh, wait for me and uh, I'll, I'll explain it all to you.